But with that being said, we're going to be discussing crisis planning within Finance League Ministry. I'm going to um, share some things that I'm thinking about doing personally that I believe will help this community, everyone that's watching the channel, everyone that's a client. If you are registered in Finance Geek Ministry, one of the things that I am going to be rolling out heading, heading into the new year because I'm already foreseeing this and I'm already experiencing it on a, on a daily basis right now, just working with a lot of clients. So as it relates to getting into a crisis, there's a couple of things that I'm going to be identifying if you happen to be in this position currently, or if it happens in the next few months, I'm going to be getting with some of the people that I uh, collaborate with some of my clients that I've been doing, you know, really well financially myself, and I'm gonna put a little coalition together, a little uh, group of leaders to tackle these main things. So if you currently have been laid off or think that that might be on the horizon, right, you're paying attention to your company and what's going on, your position, things like that. So job layoffs, negative cash flow. Right, if you're in a negative cash flow position right now, negative cash flow uh, or zero break even, zero cash flow or under, I'd say under $200 or less in cash flow. So you're either jobless, negative cash flow, zero cash flow, under $200 or less in cash flow. What I'm going to be rolling out is a financial consulting and coaching service along with, along with live sessions just like this that's just going to be strictly dedicated to that. So I'm going to have my two normal ministry meetings per month. And then I'm planning on rolling out something I do maybe once a month as a group for anyone that's in this arena right now, or going to be in the next couple of months. And we're just going to be focusing on how do we get out of that? So the mentality is going to be solving for today's problems, right now problems. How do I generate more income? How do I, you know, pivot, switch the industry, putting people together, connecting people to different opportunities. And we're going to go from there. So you would have to fall within this and it's going to be completely free, right? So it's going to be, so by the way, I already coach people for free within Finance Geek Ministry. You just have to be willing to do the work that's involved. Now, typically, if you have no job, you have more time, right? That's typically the case. So free financial service, right? That's what that will entail. So it'll be course, live session or sessions and one-to-one -one consulting, coaching. I already do all of this. Now I'm just being more targeted. Anyone that falls in this, I'm not going to really quote unquote qualify people. My qualifications already in the, the effort that you must go through in order to get my time, receive my time for a free one-to-one. -one. So I already have kind of barriers and, and things in place to avoid people taking advantage of me because it, it happens. That's the reality. I, no matter how much any one of us in here starts building a business and we want to help people, right? We want to do the right stuff. There's always someone that's going to be wasting your time, right? So as a business owner, you want to put barriers in place to really weed those people out. And the best way to do it is give them work, right? So it's like, sure, you need help. Got it. You're negative cash flow. You just lost your job. So you need help financially to help you make the next best move. Got it. Send me your numbers. Give me your mission statement, your vision. What's your goals? What's your desires, right? Who's your three closest allies, right? Just give them a list of questions, a list of work to do. 90% of the time, they won't do it. And then you're just left with the serious people who actually need the help, want the help, willing to do anything to get out of that financial situation. Here's the other reality. There's people in this world, there's people in this planet that like to be poor. It might be your own family, okay? That's the reality. It might be your own friend. It might be you, okay? That's the reality. Some of us really like to be poor. You won't say it, but nor will your action produce a different result. You choose to complain, be comfortable, all these different things. And then one day, like one day, someone says something and it's like a light bulb goes off. For me, the light bulb that went off in my head almost nine, almost 10 years ago was when I read the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. A light bulb went off. Read that book. I got chills, sparks. I'm like, oh my God, I've had a poor dad all my life. Where's my rich dad? And that was the initial spark from there. Obviously, you see what you see today. And, I'm, and I haven't even gotten started yet. Okay. Now, if you have not experienced that light bulb moment yet, a crisis might force it. So again, 
a crisis is an opportunity. But when you're in the crisis, it's it's going to be negative situation, right? You're in a negative cash flow. You lost your job. You're going into more debt. Your credit is tanking. Things are late. So it's going to be a, a bad environment, somewhere you don't want to be. For for you personally, you may have you may need to go there in order for your light bulb to go off. For me, all I needed was the knowledge. All I needed was to read the right book, hear the right words. I didn't need to go hit rock bottom. After working with over a thousand plus families of all walks of life, there's there's people that really don't need a whole lot of motivation for them to just like go run. Others need to go to 57 different conferences, read 100,000 different books on personal development, watch a thousand hours of content on personal development, motivation, inspiration, aspiration, and they still don't take action. It takes them 10, 15 years for them to finally wake the heck up. Very similar to people who, who want to quit things that they may be addicted to. Drugs, alcohol, smoking. For the, for the smoker out there, like I know a smoker for all my life, and what made him actually quit smoking was when a close friend died right in front of him due to smoking. Like, he's a close friend, super funny, super funny guy. All right, we got a loud noise there. Let's make sure we're on, there we go, Bill, you. Let's just make sure we're on mute, please. Appreciate that. Lost my train of thought. Where was I? Someone help me, come off mute. Smoking, yes, smoking friend. So he gets real sick, he's in the hospital, and then he interacts with him, sees him, this guy's gonna die, he finally dies. And then the person that I know put cigarettes down after smoking for since he was 15 years old and quit smoking. So some people need to actually see it. Some people have to actually have to go through the thick of it for you to actually wake the heck up. And once you do, I'm gonna be right here saying, hey, 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 I'm ready to serve, I'm ready to help. Before then, we need that light bulb to go off. I'm, an, I'm going to assume everyone in here, your light bulb's already gone off. Whether it was me helping in terms of the content you might've watched or attending a session like this, or other content creators, I'm just gonna assume everyone's light bulb in here is on, right? That's what I'm going to just assume, pretty sure. Everyone's light bulb is on. You're like, you're making improvements, you're doing all the right things, and we hit a stump, we hit a crisis. I've got people making 20, 30, 40,000 a month that just hit a crisis where they lost half their income, and I got people on the board right here doing 3,000, you know, normal job, career, whatever the case may be, where in a in a good rhythm right now where we've got cash flow of 825 bucks we've got debt of 247 right we spend less than what we make their light bulbs off already we, we're working with this person they're doing the right stuff they got a home equity line of credit for 60,000 8.2 percent they um, currently owe 18,000 on it we are we're moving credit card debts in there at 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 much higher interest rates so we're so we're reducing cost of living, we're recapturing cash flow, doing all the right stuff. But at the same point in time, we foresee potentially a job layoff in this family. If that happens, this income goes to zero, right? Because we're just dealing with one income, right? Husband and wife, husband's income, boom. He loses his job, goes to zero. I'm going to be presenting some ideas over here. And again, throughout the rest of the year, going into next year, I'm just going to keep putting this in front of your face over and over again, switching it up, wording it differently. And you're going to be able to pull from certain things that you can immediately take action on that will, that will help you, that will benefit you, right? So if, right, we'll just run through this quick little case study that I put together. I lose my job. Boom. I go to zero. What is my immediate next move. If I'm already doing debt elimination, I'm already implementing a debt elimination strategy. I was already dedicating cash flow into the HELOC. I'm doing velocity banking. I'm doing all the right stuff. Let's say he, let's say he gets it down to 8,000 bucks, right? And we, you know, moved a bunch of credit card debts in there really outside of the HELOC. And this uh, 247 debt is, is made up of mortgage, HELOC, balance debt, and then I think uh, student loans. Other than that, everything else is gonna be pretty much paid off. Let's say I lose my job, we get laid off in Q1, 2024, say February, okay? Me personally, if I lose my main stream of income, I'm no longer focused on paying off debt early. What I'm gonna be focusing on is how do I buy more time? Let's just say you were someone that has roughly three to six months worth of 
expenses. Let's say you have that in a savings account somewhere. So that's outside of our main debt tool, the home equity line of credit. Let's just say that's the case. If you're listening to this right now in the room or catching the recording, you do not have this or this, right? If you do not have a main debt tool, if you do not have three to six months worth of expenses, this would be my main priority right now to be acquiring that. I would not be so concerned about paying off debt faster or early because what's the point of me accelerating my debt and then I lose my job and now I go into more debt, right? So I'm kind of worse off than where I was versus let me get the emergency fund three to six months built up so that if it does happen, I at least have a bit of a buffer here. And if I blow through that and I can't find another opportunity within the three to six months, then our backup is our debt tool. And because we know velocity banking, and how it works, and we're all you know practicing it in this room, this is the most efficient way to go into debt and pay the least amount in interest. And it, and it buys you more time because you're gonna be pulling slowly. Most people, when they get layoffs, right, they lose their job, then you know they go on whatever type of government help that they can get, plus they pull from savings, then they dip into their credit cards, is what most people do, they start running debt on credit cards. Now they can't pay it off. Then they apply for a 0% credit card, right? To, to transfer that debt over here to try to buy more time. Then they get a loan. They try to apply for a loan, but at that point in time, the credit's already tanking. Your utilization's already high. So you end up with a high interest rate, 15%, 11%. Or where, do, where else do people go? The the Western Union thing, the, the AMSCOT, they go to the worst places in the world to get money. The worst, right? Reason why is because they do the most marketing. So that's the thing you see first. In this community, we know we need our debt tool, whether that be a home equity line of credit, personal line of credit, business line of credit, maybe credit cards, but we're gonna be using credit cards differently than most. Most effective, efficient way you would you would draw from the HELOC first, right? After you go through savings. Or what some people do is they'll dump their savings in the HELOC, brings the balance down, then draw from it little by little throughout the month. Any, whatever income they do make, maybe this person gets a side gig for, you know, temporarily before they get the main gig or they get a severance package or another check or two, whatever the case may be in there whatever income, whatever money we do bring in, they're dumping it into the HELOC and they're slowly drawing from it month by month to pay bills. I would not be trying to accelerate that. I simply would be paying the monthly minimum on everything. My main focus is to restore the top line number in a crisis, job layoff, negative cash flow, zero cash flow, under $200 or less. That would be the, that's the intent. Now, that's logical. I wanna come over here. This is more spiritual, emotional, uh, purpose-driven things that we could do to enhance this situation or take us to a whole new level. This I heard at, at, at church, last time I went to church, the pastor was talking about, like he just brought it up. He was like, when's the last time you actually had a conversation with your neighbor? And he, you know, he brought it right back down to the two main principles in the Bible. Two, he summed, some, you know how Jesus summed it all up into two things. Love your God, only God, serve no other gods. Love God with all your heart and serve no other gods. Love your neighbor as yourself. We, most Christians, believers, do the first one pretty good. That second one, we have turned it into an analogy and not a, and not a literal loving your neighbor as yourself. I'm, I'm being totally honest. I don't know my neighbor's first, last name name, it's a high buy situation. My mom knows their name, right? Because my mom came from that generation where you would knock on people's doors. The, the mom or dad would sit out in the porch, right? And they talk to each other, right? There was a time where you could literally probably just knock on your neighbor's door, it was already open, and you borrow a cup of sugar. That's just not how it is today, right? I, I think I was the last generation to actually see it, where I do remember growing up on a dead end street, I knew all of my neighbors. I knew all of them. I knew the parents. I was the kid that was always out playing until the lights came on. And then mom, dad, all everyone's, you know, yelling at everybody and come eat dinner, come eat dinner. And I was like always the last one because I wanted to play. But there was always a mom or a dad on the, on the porch sitting, watching the kids. And I could literally walk up to any house on the block, knock on the door. Can I use the bathroom real quick? I don't know. Where's Timmy? Where's John? 
right? Oh, he's in his room, da da da. Like people, not everyone locked their doors, right? It's not like that no more. But wouldn't it be interesting if we took an extra five seconds, 10 seconds, as we're, you know, leaving the house, whatever your normal routine is, and you see your neighbor or they come home when you come home after work or they're leaving when you're leaving to go to work. Let's see if we can potentially spark a conversation, connect with your neighbor, small steps, right? You don't have to invite them over to dinner and, and let them know everything you got going on, but maybe in small steps, and that's something that I'm gonna be working on my, myself, is small steps to connect with your neighbor. And that might be your next income opportunity. That might be your next business opportunity. That might be your next client that helps you build this. That might be the next relationship you make to get to the next relationship to get you to the next client, the next deal, the next business opportunity. So I would encourage this. This is more of a, a, a spiritual it doesn't cost you anything, barely even cost you any time, just getting to know your neighbor. Uh, especially if we're, you know, the type of crisis that I'm talking about going into 2024, we got elections coming up, real estate market crash, everyone's talking about it, all the gurus, all the content creators, real estate crashing, job layoffs, relevant things that affect everyday people. These getting awareness of this and really measuring the temperature of your neighborhood to see who's doing well and who's not. And if I'm in the camp of doing well, right? Great, who can I serve? If I'm in the camp of not doing well, okay, who's doing better than me that I could potentially learn from? So, so I would say connect with your neighbor and that could lead to this part of finding successful people in your industry to learn from. Please do not be afraid to ask for help, okay? I'm gonna, I'm gonna run through another case study real quick is a, a way worse situation than this, okay, that I'm currently working with right now, way, way, way worse, way worse. Or even I'm stumped, where I'm like, I don't know what to do. I'm like, I literally don't know what to do other than pray and I, I need to think it over. And then I just went back into, okay, here's what I would do if I'm in that situation. So I'm dealing with a mom, zero income at the moment. Expenses are, are I wanna say, in the, in the 2K range. Debt, we got, you know, stuff is late probably got stuff in collections. On top of mom being a mom, mom's also pregnant. We're dealing with violence, domestic violence. I mean, you name it, the, the, it's just crisis, okay? We're in negative cash flow, right? No cash flow, negative cash flow, credit score, low 500s, right? So bad credit. Ladies and gentlemen, what do you do in this situation? On top of mom being pregnant and having Babies, I think she has like two or three under her care, plus pregnant, no income, expenses, bills piling up, no place to live, right? We're in, we're in hotels right now, negative cash flow, credit score, low, what else can I say? And she was recently sick in the hospital. I mean, you name it, just, just keeps coming, keeps coming. And here I am, 27 years old, making multiple six figures, everything figured out, doing well. And I'm like, Lord, help me figure this out, right? What is the solution here? First thing that came to my mind, and this is something I've mentioned to every family that I've worked with so far that's in a negative cash flow, zero cash flow, job layoff, just, just terrible financial position. I say, listen, I don't know anything else other than this. Leverage social media. She does have access to a phone. She does have access to internet. I said, this is your move right here. Leverage social media, ask for help as many times as humanly possible. The reason why I'm so passionate about this because I did this for myself when I first got started. You look at all my videos when I first started, look at all of them from the very beginning, go scroll all the way down, watch any one of them. I had on a whole show going on, but let me tell you, I was not doing hot. I was negative, no income whatsoever coming in. And I'm over here saying, hey, I think I can help you. I think I can help you. Here, here are the numbers. Here's the case study, right? I want to help you. I want to help you. I, and then I, in the video, I'm saying, if you'd like to give to this channel, if you'd like to give to this channel, if you'd like to support this channel, if you'd like to give to this channel, go to the Patreon page, go to the Patreon page, go to the Patreon page. Like I'm saying it every single video. Here's how you get a hold of me. I get on the phone with them. I start serving. I start serving. I start serving. Hey, did you get value from the call? Yes, I got value from the call. How would you value it? How much would you pay for the call? $50. Okay, here's my Patreon account. Please send the money there. And, and be quiet. See what they say. Over and over and over and over and over again. You're, you're not going to access more people in today's world 
than social media at one point in time. And then if you leverage other people's social media influence, then you access exponentially more people than what you could do alone. And that's what I'm doing for this mother right here. I'm telling her story. I said, look, you got to get on here. You got to create content. You need to tell your story. Tell this story, how you got here. Be real. Think about how many other mothers are in that situation and they feel alone and they feel stuck just like you. Maybe God is putting you through that because he knows that you can handle being pregnant and have multiple kids and be sick, physically sick, and have all these late bills and have negative cash flow and have bad credit because he's prepping you for the blessing. Maybe, I don't know. You'll never find out, mom, if we don't do this. Create content, leverage social media. Do not be afraid to ask for help. I say, okay, now, logical, practical. Let's make sure we got the cash app set up, the Zelle, the Venmo, make a Stripe account, make a PayPal account, make a GoFundMe, make a Patreon. They're all free. Set them all up, make your content, have your links. Say, here is where you can help me. Here is where you can help me. And then here's what you gotta do, mom. Even though you're in a bad situation and you need help, guess what? You need to give. Even being sick, pregnant, ah, da, 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 all of it. Give, this is your key principle. This is your kingdom principle right here. Give and just give and just give. We are leaning on our Father in heaven to deliver us. And uh, trust me, he has never, never failed any one of his people. It just don't happen. Let's give. How do we give when we don't have anything to give? Good question. You can create value. That's the cool thing about being a creator when you're made by a creator and not from some big bang evolution type system of a bunch of molecules coming together or nothing coming out of nothing. No, because you have a creator and out of nothing came you from a creator and the creator put a piece of him in you. You are now a creator. You have the ability out of nothing to create value into something. By simply creating content, you now just created value. I said, mom, the, the, the value is in your story. If you would share that and how you are doing everything in your power to get out of that situation, and you talk about the business that you're trying to grow, and you talk about the people you want to serve, and you talk about the future, how the future looks bright for my family, my kids, you talk about how you're working on your finances, you talk about how you are working with a, a financial coach and consultant and other people, you don't know who's watching that. And I told her this, I said, did you know there's a bunch of people in the world with money, right? There's a bunch of people in the world with money that want to give it away. So if we know that there's people in this world that have money and they want to give it away, why don't we give them a reason? Why don't we give them a location to give that money away rather than randomly? Make it personal, make it personal. And that's what I did personally to grow this YouTube channel, to grow this community, right? So I'm going to put a link in the chat so you can see who this person is and who you would be serving. And it's an opportunity to just simply help someone, right? Financially, or you can reach out to them. Simple as that. I told her, I said, if you do that, what I just said, I will be your first giver. And I didn't tell her this, but I said, I will leverage my platform and I'm going to simply ask on your behalf because I know that there's people in my community that gave to me and they would do it again and again and again and again and again. There's people in this world with money that want to give it away and they need to find a purpose. They need to find a solution. They need to find somewhere to give that money away. And there is, there is, man, the one of the best feelings in the world personally for me is helping someone that cannot help me back. Like there's absolutely nothing they can do to offer me. They have nothing to, of value that they could offer to me. Those are the best type of people I like to serve, right? Where it's like, I don't need, they don't even know my, they don't need to know my name. I can just step in and, and serve and go my own way and see their transformation. I, I was able to do this a couple of times with an organization called Samaritan's Purse. And they're an organization that is like first on the scene for any type of natural disasters that, that occur, right? So in South Florida, we've had two major events this year. There was a major flooding in, in Fort Lauderdale area. We had like just 
crazy flooding going on. Bunch of homes got totally destroyed. And then on the west side of Florida, we had a, a hurricane come through and, and just like flatten, totally mess up Fort Myers area. Um, so both times went over there and was able to serve homeowners that their homes got destroyed and we had to clean it out, gut it out, and we got it ready for contractors to come in and fix it up. Same thing in Fort Lauderdale. Went to went to this uh, uh, older gentleman's house. He must have been in his late 80s, right? Maybe, yeah, must have been in his mid, mid or late 80s. And there was about 20 or so plus people that were just gutting the house out, ripping the carpets out, banging the walls out, getting it contract ready for it to be fully repaired and restored. The dude gave his life to Christ, right? 80 plus something years old. Gave himself, you know, just totally yielded to Christ. We They prayed over him, baptized the guy because he just, he. I mean, when's the last time that 80 year old had 20 plus random strangers helping restore his home, right? So creating opportunities for this to to happen is something I want to be doing more and more of. And, and it's a strategy to get out of the mess. It's a strategy to simply get out of the mess that you're in. So connect with your neighbor, right? It might be a connection that leads you to a connection that leads you to a connection that leads you to the next opportunity. Let's get on social media. Stop being a consumer. Start being a creator, right? That's all I'm asking. Stop being a consumer. Start being more of a creator. Whatever you consume, create double that. That's my challenge. Do not be afraid to ask for help. Also, if you have not lost your job yet and you're just not making a whole lot of money and you and you want to up level and you like the industry you're in, you're a firefighter, you're, you're a police officer, you're a nurse, right? You're in the financial space, you're in the administrative space, you're in the IT space, whatever it is. Can we go find some successful people in your industry that are probably content creators or maybe they're not on social media, but maybe they're on LinkedIn, right? And they just got a profile or... Or who's the CFO, CMO, COO of the company that you work at right now? Who is that guy or gal? Who is that woman? Who is that man? And how do you get within proximity of wealthy people fast and spend more time with those successful people? And you literally ask them for their time, which then could potentially lead to mentorship. While you're working, maintaining your credit, let's raise capital or gain access to capital. What do I mean by raising capital? Lines of credits, credit cards, HELOCs, those debt tools, but maybe also building strategic relationships, getting involved in, in ventures to raise capital, maybe designing a business plan where uh, another entrepreneur would be willing to invest money in your idea, whatever it is. So let's, let's, Let's consider that. And then strengthening current relationships that are positive in your life. If there's any negative relationships in your life right now, you're going to want to reduce the time you spend with them dramatically or completely cut them off. So you either completely cut them off or dramatically reduce the time that you're spending with negative relationships, negative people, right? Because you're already in a negative cash flow. You're already bad credit. You're already late. Like, like we got to get as far as humanly possible away from these negative people, right? Because they don't want you to, su to succeed, even if they say, oh, yeah, you know, how's that little thing going? How's that little thing going, Denzel? How's that little, how's that little YouTube channel going, Denzel? I was like, it's going fine. Thank you. Have a nice day. It's going fine. Thank you. Going well. Get around successful people that ask you questions that are genuinely interested in your growth, that are genuinely interested in, in wanting you to grow wanting you to succeed. They're they're putting your name in other people's conversations. Your name is coming up in other rooms that you're not even qualified to be in. But because you gave to that person, that other successful person, right? They just have an abundance mindset and they they share your name in, in other rooms. This happens to me a, a lot now. It's been happening more often lately where I've been I've been connecting some dots. I'm like, oh shoot, you know this person and you, you already are in business with them. And then they were talking to this person. And then I actually spoke to this person for the first time. And they were like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm reaching out because this person and this person talked about you in this room at this location at this time. And I just figured if, if they're talking about you, you got to be legit. And so that's where I was like, OK, I need to keep this. I need to keep this up, keep this rhythm up. And all I'm saying is when when crisis starts to appear or show up randomly, that's when we want to, we ideally want to amp it up even more, amp up the giving because you immediately go into conservation mode logically, right? So logically, obviously I don't want to overspend. I want to reduce costs of living. I want to cut things. That's the logical part. But spiritually, emotionally, let's, let's amp 
up our giving mindset even in the midst of a crisis and you'll be surprised that attitude how far it'll take you into real abundance and and wealth and this way you never stop so when you do get to the top you don't become greedy you just continue to become a a, a, a more abundant giver because you learn how to give when you had so little if you learn how to give with little when you're at the highs of your life you're gonna be able to give even more and it is consistent, consistent protection from our Father. I would assume as, as how I've been operating. It's just been what's worked for me so far. Recap, emotional, personal, spiritual stuff. Think about these things, the logical stuff. If I lose my job, if I end up in a negative cash flow situation, a zero cash flow. Hopefully I had three to six months worth of expenses. If I do not have that, we need to work on building that as quickly as humanly possible. Second, get your debt tool, get access to capital. HELOC, PLOC credit cards, right? Just to have, not trying to use them right away, just to have. If I enter crisis, I lose my job, negative cash flow, zero cash flow, under $200 or less, I go from eliminating debt, because most of us in here in, in the room are in the process of eliminating debt or funding your cash value life insurance policies or funding your business. And let's say I, I lose a significant portion of the top line. Obviously, we want to cut back conservation mode, reduce cost of living as much as we can. We use it three to six months. We stop paying off debt early. No sense in sending money over there if there's not going to be more coming in, right? You want to preserve it. And then I go from velocity banking to pay off debt to velocity banking to strategically go into more debt, but slower, which would buy more time than the three to six month thing. Maybe I need an extra three, an extra six, whatever it is to, to recover, right? It's a more effective, efficient way to borrow, in my opinion, right? It's just my opinion. It's what worked for me. I didn't take loans out. I When I was in a negative cash flow position, I was leveraging my credit cards on 0% effectively and efficiently. I was running bills through the credit card and then I was pulling from the line of credit to pay the credit card off in full. And then whatever income did come in while I was recovering from the crisis, I dumped it, parked it right into the line of credit to reduce the interest and the payment itself. That's it. Then Finance Geek Ministry from now all the way into Q1 of next year. If you fall under this, you just reach out to me directly. You have to be in Finance Geek Ministry. It's totally free. You sign up. You're part of that. Boom. You do the work that I talk about, you're going to get access to me one-to-one. -one, and then I'm going to have dedicated live group sessions where we just, you know, you actually have to participate. You come off the mic and you say, this is my situation. Here are my four major numbers. This is what I'm currently working with. Here's what's going on. And then I'm going to ask questions. And then it's going to be in a, a group setting. We're all going to come up with ideas. And then who knows? Mine or might say, hey, I know someone in your local area that could probably help you with that. Or Bishop says, yeah, oh, uh, I know a pastor in your area that's currently doing this right now. Like, let me tell you, I'm gonna, I would be the most creative homeless person right now. If you put me in a situation where I gotta become homeless, I would be so creative, it's not even funny. I would not be the guy standing on the street with a sign. That's just a waste of freaking time. I would not do that. The first thing I'm doing is I'm going to a church. I'm finding the nearest church that I can walk to, talking with the pastor, let him know my situation. Hey, what work do you got going on? Who's the most wealthiest person in your church that I could communicate with right now? I have an idea. I have a proposition. Likely that successful person is somewhere in the world of sales and marketing. I said, listen, all I need is a mic. All I need is a camera. Tell me your product. What's your service? Put me to work. I'll clean your floors. I'll clean your house, whatever it is. I just need some place to stay. I'm getting creative. Trust me with it. I'm, you put me in a, a homeless situation. You get rid of all my tools, all my assets, all my contacts. I am not going to be standing on the street with a sign asking for help. That's a complete, complete waste of time. I'm going to spend majority of my day communicating with a church. Once they can put me in contact with whomever, then I'm probably going to go to the library, right? So I can get on the internet, access the internet, and try to uh, go on the different social medias to find someone in my local area, local content creator, entrepreneur, doing something that I can serve them and sell something, do some work. Boom. Then in regards to eating, right? Cause I'm, I'm going to have to eat. I got no money. I'm going to very strategically approach different restaurants that have like free stuff that they do, right? Whether it's free, getting free water, free, free, this, free, that, whatever it may be. There's always like restaurants doing free things. Right. And I'm just going to ask, Hey, I'm homeless right now. I'm just looking for a meal. Can you help? No. 
Gotcha. Next. Can you help? No. Gotcha. Next. Can you help? No. Gotcha. Next. Can you help? Boom. It's a, it's a, it's the law of averages. The more you ask, right? It's like you get 10 no's, one yes. Okay. One out of 10, one out of 15, one out of 20. Works the same way when you're in that negative situation that you're in right now. You just got to talk to more people. Get away from the negative Nancy's the negative Drews, the negative Toms, and get around a positive minor. Get around a positive Brenda. Get around a positive Chris, Cornelius, positive Eric, George, right? Apollo. Get around positive people, man. They're on social media, right? They're in your area, right? They're looking for winners. You could be the next one. So that was just a, a, a quick thing. I'm, I'm pretty much done here. That's, that's my session. How long have we been going? All right, so about an hour, all right? So any questions, now is the time to raise your hand, drop comments in the chat. Let me know what you got going on. How can I serve? How can I help you? Have any ideas? Let me go from there. So I see a comment from Daniel says, just donated, love this. It is perfect time for this ministry. I'm open to help with this project next year. Any way that I can, have to hop off. Thank you for including me. Okay, cool. So Daniel probably left at that point. Yeah, I don't see him. I will get connected with Daniel. Daniel is someone that's gonna be speaking at my live event on December 16th. So if any of you are planning on coming down to South Florida, hang out with me for an entire day and mastermind on your business, your purpose, your values, your principles, and figure out how we can 10X your, your income, 10X your business, 10X your lifestyle. Let's figure it out. Let's make it happen. So Daniel will be a speaker. He's gonna be talking about how to maximize retirement income, understanding how to how to sequence your distributions in retirement to maximize the income. Very, very important. I'm excited. That's a new relationship that I built with him. Let's see. So if anybody wants to uh, talk, you can use the reaction button to uh, raise your hand if you have anything you want to share. Or if you're not in a position to talk, you can drop a comment. And if not, we could close it out early routine yes sir um so the um what i've been doing with all the ecclesia gatherings is uploading them to an unlisted um youtube playlist that you can find in kajabi in the ecclesia gathering bubble that chat right you'll you'll see the youtube link right and it'll take you to all the videos that we've done so far so i'll be I sure know. yeah once yeah, once I upload it to YouTube, you guys would have the link and you can share it with whomever you want. And it's really cool because it's a YouTube link. So everyone's got YouTube, right? They don't have to sign up, make an account or anything. You just send them right to uh, YouTube of that of that particular video. So I'll try to have this uploaded as quickly as possible. And then I'll send out a link to the playlist in the Ecclesia Gathering chat. I'll, I'll do that. Rotimi says, this is perfect timing for that idea, Denzel. A lot of people have either been laid off or are scheduled to be potentially laid off soon. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Like there's a couple of podcasts that I listen to frequently. One in particular is the PBD podcast, Patrick Bed David, and they're constantly doing um, either political updates, then they do economic and business updates. And for the longest, like every other podcast, they've been consistently talking about real estate crash, market crash, and jobs being laid off. So they're projecting Q1 of next year that more and more layoffs are going to occur, but it's going to be a gradual thing like all throughout Q1, not like just all at once, but it's going to be a gradual, consistent thing that's going to be happening. And what have we also been seeing this year? We've seen a trend of people wanting to get paid more money for less work, right? We've been seeing this trend going on. People want to get paid for more money for less work. People want to work from home. They don't want to go to the office anymore. Well, guess what? These corporations, they don't care. So they're going to get rid of but if you're anyone that has from after COVID, you went full remote, now you're working from home, you better wake up, okay? These companies want people to show up to the office, show up in person. Like you can't get culture. You can't create culture through Zoom. It's impossible. So those of you that, are, that have been working from home, but traditionally you were working in person, it's different if prior to COVID, you were always working from home and then it was like, well, I'm already working from home. It's totally different. You were going to an office in person, you know, around people. You're near the boss. You're near the managers and different things like that. And then you went remote. And now that it's been three years and they reopened the office. So some people went back. And then let's say you're one of those people that stayed remote. Mm, you in for a rude awakening. Rude, rude awakening. Those people that went back, they've been talking to the managers and the bosses every day. You've been remote via Zoom. There's no connection. They're going to drop you, okay? Because these corporations 
all they need to do is fire employees, which lowers their expenses of the company, which raises the value of the stock for the investors. They get more capital. They create technology to replace you. So now they can, they can get more done with those people that went back to the office than the person that stayed home. So I'm telling you right now, if that's you, wake up. It, that is, it, it is not gonna be sweet and you're gonna wanna, you're gonna wanna start making that connection, go back to the office, communicate, right? With your bosses, managers, if you wanna retain that position and move up in, in the ranks, okay? Because you're in for a rude awakening. Very, 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 very rude. Very rude awakening, it's not gonna be fun. Then there's just, there's industry pivots going on, right? where we're just simply seeing jobs disappear faster than jobs being created because of AI technology and just tech and just people getting smarter, people figuring out more efficient ways to do things. So if you're in that camp of trying to make more money for less work, or you're in the camp of four day work week, ridiculous, four day work week, five day work week, like if you're in that camp, you're in for a rude awakening. These corporations got no mercy. They're gonna drop you. We need to figure out how can we become assets to these companies? How can we, be, how can we cre create more value, more intellectual property to the companies, become allies with the CEOs and the managers, build up? Then simultaneously, let's hone in on your purpose, your gifts, because that might be a business in and of itself. And you use that skill, gift, or talent for another entrepreneur and you can take the funds from there to self-fund your own project so eventually where this overtakes your career because we know we can't physically work forever right or, or we I guess you could but you're not going to be as efficient as a 20 year old a 30 year old if you're in your 60s 70s or 80s so you have to figure out how to transition your mind into a business that could hire those young guns the 20 30 year olds like me that are looking to grow, looking to make a name for themselves, and you give them the systems to succeed, there you make a living for them, they're happy, they're making money, you're profiting, you're in your seniority position. Let's figure this out. Dory says, I'd love the replay, just popped on, missed your talk, do we need to be in Ecclesia? How does that work? So I just sent out an email to a bunch of my entire list, just inviting everyone. Finance Geek Ministry is completely free, Dory. You go right to my website, denzelrodriguez.com. You'll see Finance Geek Ministry. Put in your name, email, boom. Gets you access to the course, puts you in a newsletter, and you'll be notified of these Zoom meetings that I have um, twice a month. First and last Friday of every month, unless there's a holiday, um, my birthday, or something like that going on, then I will typically change the time. And it's completely free. I do, fr I do free coaching. I do free courses. I do free group coaching group coaching sessions. This is all free. It's all giving, right? It's my ministry of finance that I'm going to be scaling up for the next 40 years.